Ross, was it part of your job as head writer to select some of the staff writers? And if so, what qualities did you look for in them? Uh, most of the time it was my job. It, it sort of depends where the show was. Some One time uh, the show had come from a very uh, productive sitcom company uh, called Miller Boyette. And they had multiple shows and lots of writers already. And they had written, Miller and Boyette hadn't, uh, Bill Bickley and Michael Warren had written a pilot and I was hired to come run the show because they couldn't run all these shows themselves. They had already staffed the show. I knew many of the writers, but that time I was the last person hired. Uh, other times I took over a show that was already in progress, another Miller Boyette show called Step by Step. I came in to run the show in the second year. So much of the staff was in place. And in fact, half of it had been writers that I had worked with on the other Miller Boyette show. So I knew them and thought highly of them, but there were a couple of slots I needed to fill. In other cases, uh, especially when it was a new show where I had written the pilot and the show was going into its first season, uh, it's a blank slate and I had to put together a writing staff from scratch there. Uh, people I knew, sometimes people I had not worked with before. Um, I always tried to uh, make sure we had somewhat of a balance uh, gender-wise, especially on family sitcoms where we were gonna be writing about uh, male points of view and female points of view, and I did not think it was a good idea to just have men writing what teenage girls think uh, and so on. Um, so I've done sort of all those variations of hiring the staff, and uh, when you ask what qualities you look for, um, I want to make sure that, um, I think they're good writers, so what does that mean? That they, that they put uh, character writing ahead of the joke, per se, that they don't just uh, uh, pitch wild jokes, but are, are, are that they're telling a story. They're telling a real story. I thought that was incredibly important on family sitcoms because they're so rooted in that basic storyline that you're telling about those almost tribal experiences that we've all gone through about getting your first bra or your driver's license or all, all those kind of rites of passage that kids and families go through. Um, uh, I also want them to, especially when I was working on the what was called TGIF, the ABC's Family Friday, kid and family friendly shows there. Some writers who had worked on very high profile shows did not think very highly of the those shows, the ABC kid and family shows. And yet some of them would interview for a job because they needed a job. And I needed to make sure that they had a good attitude about being on the show that you're on. Because if you just think, eh, I'll be there for the paycheck, but I, this show's terrible. I don't think you're a very happy member of a team then. So I tried to avoid that situation and, and largely did. How would you see that in someone? That's interesting. Um, well, I, I'll, I'll give you a specific example. I, ha I had a writer who had actually worked at Miller Boyette before and when I was, and he's a really nice guy, but he was saying to me, I don't want to have to take notes from Miller and Boyette. And I just had to say to him, they own the company. I can't tell you you're not going to take notes from these guys. Uh, you know, it's their candy store. And so we're here working for them. This is not a job for you. And we parted friends and he went off and found other shows to work on there. But that would have been a bad situation. He wouldn't have been happy. And then I wouldn't have been happy because I would have been having this person, in his case, he was, I was looking for a second in command person. I, I need that person to uh, really be happy coming to work and not be unhappy.